Prince Rupert knew that victory for the Royalists could only be achieved if the right wing of cavalry were successful in their charge. After routing the Parliamentarian left as planned, Rupert began to swing around to the rear of Cromwell commanding Parliament's right. However, the baggage train of supplies and camp followers for Parliament blocked their route, essentially taking Rupert off the field of battle. The Royalist infantry, which initiated in concert with Rupert, was fighting well. Cromwell sent his second line of reserves into action early to compensate for how well the Royalist horse performed on the other side of the field. The left wing of Cromwell's opponents sent in their reserves too late, and the Royalist left was routed. Fairfax, who was unengaged, performed an essential move of advancing behind the enemy and thus sealing any route of escape for the King's infantry. The remnants of Parliament's left horse gathered and joined the Dragoons, who were previously deposited as snipers against Rupert's initial charge. For their disciplined cohesion, Cromwell's horse were called Ironsides. They flanked the King's infantry. In this era of warfare, this is the point in the battle where the majority of casualties occurred. King Charles himself sought to charge in to aid his footmen, but his bodyguard coursed him to flee while he still could. The Redcoats recorded the will of the Royalist infantry. Every available man had to attack the remaining Royalists with butt end of musket. After four years of civil war, infantry was a rare commodity. King Charles was now without an army after the Battle of Maysby. He was doomed to roam the countryside as a fugitive. The Redcoats, on the other hand, kept the uniform distinction for two centuries and built an empire where the sun never set.